next guest celebrates 25 years as the drummer for one of the Bay Area's most beloved hometown bands, the Grateful Dead. He has traveled the world in a search to find the universal power behind the beat of the drum. In his book and CD, Planet Drum, he tells us what he found. Please welcome Mickey Hart. Hey, Mickey, welcome to Q. Thank you, Brian. Nice to be here. Now, uh, I've, I've uh, read some of your book, and you've got some, uh, some interesting information about, about drums and rhythms. You believe that, that rhythm has a healing power. Oh, well, yeah, well, it's not, not just me. I mean, we all uh, share this uh, opinion around the world. Every culture has its rhythm, and it has its music. It's how we evolved as a species. We danced our dances and sang our songs and made rhythm. We're coded for it. It's in our, it's in our bones. All right, now you, uh, you've got a pretty extensive uh, percussion collection, and you brought some of your more unusual pieces out to show us. What did you bring? I brought a few instruments here. Uh, I brought uh, an instrument from Tibet, which is more, one of the more unusual instruments. This is a, a sacred instrument. This is used in prayer. It's called a damaru, and uh, it's made of uh, two human skulls uh, joined at the, uh, at, the at the top of the crania. Oh, that's interesting. You picked that up in your normal hardware store. Where'd you get that, Milwaukee? Yeah, no, actually I didn't, but uh, you could probably find one in Milwaukee, but uh, um, no, the, uh, it shows the impermanence of life. There's nothing morbid or weird about bones. It's, the bones are picked for their sonic quality, not for their weirdness, you know. It's not morbid at all, but uh, it's using the Sanskrit text to uh, tell where you are in, in the chant, and it's played like so. That's it. And, uh, I mean, you'll see a lot of children's toys like this as well. I mean, that's how these instruments have mutated in a, and have been allowed to live over the years. Do any of these things have, uh, have healing power? Well, <clears throat> it's how you play them and in what the social context is. And um, rhythm, especially um, rhythm that has redundancy to it, seems to have this uh, therapeutic quality. And, and its music is medicine. Um, it allows us to uh, sort of squirts a little bit of adrenaline into our system, the mid into the cortex, and then makes us feel good, gives us self-esteem, it lets us dance, and it lets us sing, and it leaves boredom, it does all those things, uh, and it's fun. So, uh, yes, it does have healing qualities to it. Uh, now, let's see, why don't you show us what else you brought here? This is interesting. Uh, this is an instrument from uh, Kenya, and it's a wooden instrument. It's, a, it's like a wooden xylophone. They call it a balafon. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, more of an instrument for entertainment. And uh, it has gourds underneath it, which, is, uh, which are the resonators, and makes it sound big and beautiful. And sometimes you play it with two or three people. Sometimes a chora player or a, a stringed instrument will uh, join in. And it's very simple. It's pentatonic. Oh, that's pretty. That's really pretty. Now, is it me, or does this look, look like the slab of ribs that tipped over the Flintstones car at the end of that episode? I'm not sure. Well, they make them out of bones, and make them out of stones, and make them out of wood, and make them out of metal, and make them out of anything that makes a sound. Now, what do they use this for? What, what kind of a ceremony, or is there a ceremony this is played for? Well, they're all rituals. It's usually the dance, or it makes time of the day pass. You know, that's what this, these instruments are for. And, of course, uh, the more exotic ones are used for trance, and, you know, and the rapture, and things like that, and move into altered states. That's what these instruments basically have in common. Uh, rhythm is a great way of doing that. Okay, now what else have you got? Well, I have another instrument here from... Um, it's one of my favorites. It's a single membrane, one of the oldest instruments known to man. It's, um, it's called a tar. It's, uh, it's an Arabic... A, a tar? A T-A-R, a tar, yeah. Yeah. And you play that with the feathers in some parts yes, of the country. Yes, that's right. You can play it with just about anything. But most of the time it's played with fingers, not played with sticks. It's a real light, delicate instrument. Now what does this play for? What would you what would you play this for? This particular uh, beat I'm playing is a Nubian beat. It's a it's a wedding song. It's played for the first wedding. And what happens to you for the second wedding? I don't know what do you that I don't know that one, Brian. <laughs> but this instrument is really second wedding. The first wife gets half of the drum, I guess. Well, I guess why it only has one head, Brian, because the, the, the wife got an alimony. Um, this instrument is played very delicately. It's one of the romance instruments, as we would say. It's not beaten, it's played. It's very delicate, and you can play it in a hotel room or in an airport or, you know, in the quiet in your living room without disturbing you know, the, uh, the neighbors. This is one of the uh, more versatile instruments. 
All right, now let me ask you, do you think that people are born with rhythm? Of course we are. You were looking at the only black man in the world who can't dance, so I just well, ruled that for you. Can, you can dance, you just don't know it. You know, uh, I mean, you're a rhythm instrument. You beat, your heart beats, uh, it pumps 2,000 gallons of, uh, of blood a day. That's rhythm. You know, you blink your eyes, you walk, you talk. That's all rhythm. All these things really deal with the larger mystery of rhythm. That's what they really are. And, uh, you know, the, we're embedded in a universe of rhythm. So really, this is just the way we've been able to come to grips with the, the rhythmic universe. And, you know, how we go through life rhythmically is how well we maintain our, you know, our well-being. That's what it's all about. Well, there's some interesting, interesting stuff, and I appreciate you bringing it down. One question I've got to ask you, though, before we go here, uh, about the dead. Now, mm -hmm. uh, I've been reading some stuff and hearing some stuff where, uh, where Jerry Garcia lately has uh, sounded like he's kind of tired. Maybe he wants to, to retire. Is dead going to be around for a while, do you think? Well, we're playing 80 dates this year, it's just as we've always played. Uh, uh, I just spoke to him a little while ago. He didn't seem very tired to me, but, you know... Uh, <laughs> You know, there's a lot of a lot of rumors going around, and you know, there's a, there's a, you know, we can't really deal with all of that. It, it, we're going to go on as long as it's fun, and as long as we can keep on uh, getting that groove and feeling good about it. So, um, um, I mean, he's in Hawaii right now, down for, down there in 40 fathoms, uh, getting his strength, and uh, we'll be back uh, later this month. I don't all see right. any. 80 dates then. As usual. All right. Well, that's great, Mickey Hart. Thank you for being with us. The book and the CD are called The Planet. Drum, and they're published by Harper, San Francisco. Thank you for being with us. Come back and see us again, okay? I'll do that. All right. And we'll be right back.